Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is sure a blessing to be with the Lord's people in the Lord's house. And we're grateful that you're here with us on Facebook. And later you'll be able to see on YouTube, wherever you are. Uh, it's just a blessing to share in God's word and in Christian fellowship with, with you all. That's the way we say it in the South Farm, with y'all. Y'all. I'll say that we have come to worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. And to that end, let us prepare our hearts while Diane plays the prelude for us. Matthew 28, 5 through 6, the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Amen. Amen. Jesus. 
Let us pray together. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this morning and this time, to, time together. We lift up everyone out there uh, on, the, uh, on the internet uh, with us this morning. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege of uh, coming together and coming to you in prayer. Uh, we thank you for your nourishing rain uh, upon your earth uh, this morning and uh, for the beauty we see this time of year of newness of life. And we thank you that we uh, serve and worship you, our risen Savior and that we can have newness of life and forgiveness from our sin and walk with you uh, in, your, in your spirit and by your word. And we just lift up your servant this morning, dear God, uh, your Holy Spirit upon him and upon us as well. Open our hearts and minds to what you have for us this morning. And may we be uh, uh, convicted of our sin and may we be directed uh, to serve you and serve others uh, this week in Jesus' name. Amen. John 16, 7 to 11. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and see, and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judge. The word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Seven hundred years before Christ came into the world, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah offered timeless words. He spoke of his own generation of people, but what he said still rings true more than two and a half millennia later. Isaiah pronounced, Woe unto those who call evil good, and good evil. That's what he said. Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil. And I would submit to you, my brothers and sisters, that our world is so lost, it is so deceived, our world is so depraved that it deems what God calls good to be evil. And the world deems what God calls evil to be good. And certainly as Christians, such a development distresses us and we are likely to find little consolation in realizing that such things are not a recent <coughs> development. In fact, we go way back to the Garden of Eden. And we discover that when the tempter enticed Eve, he called evil good and good evil. In the days of Noah, the world called evil good and good evil. And so it continues through the course of human history to this day. That good is evil and evil is good is a refrain that grows louder and louder as the world gets darker and darker. And I expect that the world will continue to sing that song that evil is good and good is evil until Jesus himself comes to silence it. But all is not lost. There is hope. Even in our world there is hope. And in John chapter 16, Jesus speaks of someone who is already in the world. He's in the world right now who has come to effect a change in the dysfunctional thinking of our world. John calls him the comforter, the helper, the advocate, the counselor. In all such terms, we know more commonly as the Holy Spirit. 
And one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is reprove the world. He convicts the world. It says there in John chapter 16, essentially, that he proves the world to be wrong. He proves the world to be in error about sin and about righteousness and about judgment. And it certainly seems, it certainly seems to us that our world is wrong about sin. If it calls evil good, if it calls sin righteousness, then our world is wrong about sin. And it certainly seems that our, that our world is wrong about righteousness too. It calls good evil. It calls righteousness sin. Our world is wrong about what it calls wrong. And our world is wrong about what it calls right. But the Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit has come to set the world straight. Maybe he just has to do it one person at a time. So having considered last week, we considered sin last week. Today, let us take a look at this second element of conviction, and that is righteousness. When he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, that was last week, and of righteousness this week, Lord willing, next week of judgment. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of righteousness He reproves the world of righteousness. He proves the world to be wrong about righteousness with just six words. They are words that God's Holy Spirit put on the lips of an Old Testament prophet named Habakkuk. And those same words the Holy Spirit put on the heart of the Apostle Paul, who used them in two of his epistles. And then the Holy Spirit brought those words to the mind of the author of the book of Hebrews, who used them to encourage first century Christians. Those six words have revolutionized human religion, and now those six words serve as a fundamental tenet of the Christian faith. Six words. The just shall live by faith. Those who are righteous, the just, shall live by faith. And that biblical statement is used four times in the Word of God. It's used in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. It's used in Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. It's used in Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Habakkuk was an Old Testament prophet and a priest as well. Habakkuk was a man who wrestled with, he wrestled within himself. And it seems that Habakkuk also wrestled with God. Habakkuk had observed the wickedness of his own people. He observed the wickedness of God's people. He saw violence and corruption and injustice even within the temple, within the house of God. And he noted the wickedness of conquering enemies as well. He saw those enemies as deceitful and destructive and despicable. And having seen iniquity and evil within God's house and without God's house, Habakkuk lamented the absence of God's hand to do anything about either of them. He said, O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? He prayed to God, how long shall I cry and pray and you will not save? Your people, God, are wicked, 
all people have seemed to be overcome with or by wickedness. And he raises a fist to God and says, what are you going to do about it? You know, when the chaos of our own world has built to a crescendo, when our nation's character and strength seems to be diminished and drained, when our own communities seem to be crumbling and our families seem to be falling apart, when our souls have been darkened by doubt and shaken by fear, the character of God is not to be questioned. If anybody's character is to be questioned, let it not be the character of God. Okay? Let it not even be the character of God's enemies. If anyone's character, character is to be questioned, let it, let it be our own. Let it be the character of God's people. And the question that Habakkuk asked, what is God going to do? might better be asked, what am I going to do? If I find our world to be a wicked place, our nation and our communities and our families falling apart, maybe the question isn't, God, what are you going to do about it? Maybe the question is, what am I? supposed to do. And Habakkuk gives the answer. He says, the just shall live by faith. And in the first two words of that biblical statement, the just, we see the possibility of righteousness. Humankind is not righteous. Humankind is not good. Humankind is not just. That is the unpopular position of God's word, but it's God's word nonetheless. The Bible says there is none righteous. No not even one. There is no one that understands. There is no one that seeks after God. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. The Bible even goes on to say that what we think is good in us, our own righteousnesses, they are nothing more than filthy rags to God. Ecclesiastes says that there is not a just person upon the earth that does good and does not sin. The overwhelming conclusion of scripture is this. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so, is there any hope? Is there any possibility that any of us can be righteous? Any possibility that anybody can be good? Any possibility that anybody can be just? And if there is any possibility of such, it cannot be in our works. The Bible says it is not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us. The Bible says, Ken, by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so if salvation is by grace, 
then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace would not be grace. But if salvation were by works, it wouldn't be by grace. If there is any possibility that anybody can be righteous before God, it's not in the law. Romans tells us, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in God's sight. Romans says that a man is justified, any person is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. A person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. And there's the possibility of righteousness. If there is any hope, if there is any possibility that any of us can be good, can be righteous, can be just in the eyes of God, it is only through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3 and verse 24 says that we are justified, we are made righteous freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And so by God's grace, if our faith is in Jesus Christ, then the righteousness of God is unto all. It is upon all who believe in Jesus. Here is the possibility of righteousness. It is by faith alone. For the just shall live. By faith. The just shall live. This is the power of righteousness. To live. The Old Testament tells us that there is a way. There are many ways. There are countless ways that seem right unto people. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs says, in the way of righteousness is life. And in the path of righteousness there is no death. Titus chapter 3 verse 7 indicates being justified by his grace, we have been made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And for his sheep, for those who follow Jesus, for those who trust in Jesus, for those who believe in Jesus, he offered, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He said, I, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though they were dead, yet shall they live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe that? Yes. I believe that. Spiritual life, abundant life, eternal life can be had by faith alone. For the just shall live by faith. The just shall have life by faith. The just shall live by faith. That statement recorded three times in the New Testament offers the practice of righteousness. In Romans chapter 1, that verse, that phrase is used in regard to salvation. 
where Paul says, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. He says, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We are saved. By faith alone. And then later in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, the statement is used in regard to the, to the Christian's security. You see, the Galatian believers had come to believe incorrectly that salvation could be lost by violation of Old Testament law. The Apostle Paul, however, countered that Christ, having taken upon himself the curse of the law, has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He says that if it is that nobody can be born to spiritual life by the law, it follows that spiritual life is not maintained by the law. That is not to say that the law is bad. It's not to say that the law is any less good or holy, but it is to say that the spiritual life of the Christian is maintained not by the law. The spiritual life of the Christian is maintained by faith. For Paul says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 11, the just shall live by faith. And the author of the book of Hebrews used that biblical statement to strengthen weary Christians. These were Christians that were enduring persecution for Christ's sake. Maybe they had lost sight of their heavenly reward. And perhaps they had begun to wonder, maybe what you and I sometimes wonder, whether Christ was coming back or not. They were tired. They were sorrowful. They were worried. They were doubting. Their bodies were weakened. Their confidence was shaken. And their faith was shrinking. The author of the book of Hebrews encouraged them by saying, Cast not away your confidence. Don't throw away your confidence in Christ. He says there is a great reward to come for those who remain faithful to Christ, for those who remain confident in Christ. He says the just shall live by faith. What is it? That your soul needs today. What is the need of your soul today? Maybe. Maybe it's salvation. If that is the need of your soul. I have six words. The just shall live. By faith. Have faith in Jesus. Maybe the need of your soul is assurance. You need to be assured that God has given to you eternal life. Maybe it's assurance that eludes us. We need a little bit of security. Six words. The just shall live by faith. And who of us couldn't use a little extra strength in the Christian walk? We're weary, we're tired, we're worried, maybe a little bit of doubting, maybe, maybe we're wondering whether or not Jesus is actually coming back. 
Maybe we have tired of waiting. We just don't know what to do. Here's what we do. We live by faith. Six words. The just shall live by faith. And it's okay. It's okay if you just go ahead and say it with me. The just shall live by faith. Amen. unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen. Shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. Amen.